Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And today I'm going to talk to you about male ego. Well, since I'm a male, cisgender, heterosexual man, I think I definitely can talk about it. So yeah, there's some background to it. Uh, yeah, by, by, by the way, I'm gonna reveal a secret on how to deal with your own ego at the end of this podcast. So yeah, listen carefully. Maybe there is something to it that uh, you may find revealing here. So yeah, why all of a sudden I'm going to talk to you about ego? Well, actually, it's not all of a sudden. I mentioned in my previous episode that I'm going to do it. But yeah, I said a lot of shit. So yeah, I don't, I don't 100% follow everything that I said before. So I definitely need some reminders here and there. So yeah, just throw some comments and uh, let us engage. Because I want to know who is listening to this. I really am intrigued to learn more about you. So yeah, share some of your personal stories and resonate. Subscribe, share, of course, the podcast itself. But yeah, let's let's dive in. So why can I talk about male ego? Uh, some reasons. Well, I mentioned probably at some point in time, one of the previous episodes that I went through a um a, i don't know what's it called properly like professional retraining is kind of a weird russian standard of education that is like two years length and it is not aligned with uh, any other like widely internationally acknowledged uh, forms of education because it's not like master's degree it's something different so yeah anyway I went to a program of professional retraining for a humanitarian university. It was a two-year program, and I unfortunately went through only one. And uh, yeah, I had to reallocate for business reasons, uh, but that, that's the only reason, actually, that uh, stopped me from finishing it, because uh, I would have uh, really liked the topic of psychology, and even though I prefer coaching as a more kind of forward thinking approach because in my view psychology is generally kind of great <laughs> i mean psychology is important in our life and yeah it's great to have a therapist I haven't been to one in a while but yeah um so that program on training you do become a psychologist uh, runs throughout like two years and yeah there's been a story Again, in previous episodes about me trying to talk about Stanislav's Groff work and his attempt to use psychedelics in therapy. And I was shushed by the head of faculty. She said that he never said that, but yeah, he fucking did. Probably one of the reasons he, well, she wasn't happy about me talking about psychedelics in the open is because of the social taboo. So, yeah, I mean, even the psychologists and people who run fucking faculties, they can be stupid as fuck because so they are human beings. And this is actually one interesting thing that uh, probably worth kind of stressing and highlighting here because there is this tendency for people to think that doctors know better, psychologists know better. And, you know, like other people know better because they have a fucking degree, but not in all the cases. I've seen some psychologists in my life and I would not like recommend going to each and every one of them because some of them are like saying pure bullshit in some cases and yeah, can harm people. So well, at least limit people from understanding something like topic of psychedelics as it is. Because again, if you go, yeah, and I promise I'm going to talk about fucking psychedelics a lot because, yeah, this is definitely the red light that goes throughout the, my podcasts attempts, I guess. But yeah, we'll see where it goes. I mean, in terms of the podcast attempt, but yeah, psychedelics are like fucking critically important because they, uh, gave me a lot in terms of understanding myself in terms of understanding the concept of ego in terms of generally understanding how the psyche works because then there i got into various directions of psychology so yeah the, the idea about the program was that throughout the educational journey basically 70 percent 
of time is dedicated to practice. 30 is through, or 60, 40, I don't remember exactly, roughly. And you get to know each uh, kind of, not each, but, you know, some, a variation of psychological, I don't know what's the proper word here, like directions, let's put it this way. So just from the top of my mind, psychoanalysis, art therapy, dance therapy, uh, body therapy, uh, related therapy, or however the fuck it's called, uh, fairy tale therapy, um, family drama, shit. I mean, there were more, but I don't like remember them all at the moment. So yeah, I mean, they give you theory and then you practice. So basically, depending on the direction, well, art therapy, you just go there and try to create some art and putting the process of healing at the core of, you know, whatever the fuck you're doing at that art therapy session. So, yeah, I've been through some uh, various directions of uh, psychology there, and I I know how it works pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, the general concepts are there. So, interaction with the... Well, they recently tend to criticize Freud, but... Why the fuck would you criticize Freud for? He's the fucking founding father of modern psychology. I mean, if it wasn't for him, we would have been here in the first place as the species in general. But yeah, fuck critics aside, just again, there are different concepts and theories and ways to put it. But basically, you interact with the human being on many different levels and it's not like only ego there are other variations to it and there are parts like there are other things i mean there are again many different theoretical directions here and i don't, I don't want to dig into them but that concept of ego is critical for today's episode and yeah i mean as i said as probably i lack knowledge at the moment to give a proper description of you know like theoretical background in order to be able to explain simple con its concepts in simple manner but however the case so ego is something that is there so this is like core pillar that is founding our character pretty much in a sense and there are states that um of altered consciousness that help person human being interact with own ego or even be in a situation where there is an ego dissolvement happening so what the fuck is ego dissolvement would you ask like seriously what meltdown what the fuck is this so it is a state where in within within which you as a human being experiencing this extremely insane realization understanding and comprehension of the fact that you as a human being have an ego and you can see how it works and understand internally maybe not like see in terms of visually it could be an image that you can draw in your hand it could be different from what i've experienced but it is confirmed by various studies and the knowledge is out there and I'm yeah, going to dig into the topics of psychedelics and provide additional information on the go while <laughs> recording the podcast. And, um, but the thing here about um, the state of that egoless sense is that you are pretty much naked in your own mind. And all the barriers, all the limitations, or the defense systems, all the uh, perceptions, pillars of perception, and other aspects of your personality, they're, they don't kind of prevail over you as in you being the mind. Shit, I'm digging into like uncharted territories here. But yeah, being there in that state of mind, you then 
are able to understand your own barriers and maybe even notice them because you haven't taken any um, thought about like if they exist in the first place, you may never thought about it. But then in that state of mind, you realize that they're there and this is how they are structured. This is what they kind of look like. This is uh, what is it they're core in the foundation and what are the reasons leading to it like certain traumas that we experienced in our life or certain occasions that influence our perception of reality so yeah one of the basic examples from the old days is why a person may be afraid of horses I mean, why would they terrify a person? Maybe because such person, when was at certain age, doesn't matter whether a child or not, got kicked by a horse that was passing by. So there goes trauma, right? And then hence there's this defense mechanism that would then kind of try and save them from the traumatic experience. So the next time such person would probably take a... a Shit, I forgot the word for. Um, yeah, just take a side road or, you know, yeah, anyway, so just, you know, take some, make some distance between the horse and yourself. And then once you understand that, you're then able to kind of dismantle the systems or break down them into like nothing, sand break those. Um, patterns that are deep rooted in your mind because again mind is very well uh brain actually not mind it, there's are like different concepts here i'm talking about it's better not to confuse them with each other because they're separate so yeah going back to the brain so brain has neurons and the neurons they build neuron connections with each other uh through synapses if i remember correctly but yeah anyway so there are certain patterns being created while you're doing something and in the previous episode i mentioned to you about the concept of uh unconscious incompetence and the two by two um diagram <laughs> this what consultants do they do two by two so yeah uh, unconscious incompetence conscious uh, incompetence conscious competence and then unconscious competence so those are the states through which our brain pretty much goes through when we learn a skill. In more details, it's uh, uncovered in the previous episode. So yeah, then you understand that there are these specific kind of patterns or roots or parts of your uh, kind of brain activity, because not like physical. Well, in some cases it is physical, but then again, I think we're well i'm touching a territory of things like this visualization and things like this so this is basically reprogramming your mind or restructuring it in a sense towards building new neuron connections so that then they are able to help you in terms of like achieving whatever the fuck you're planning to achieve and in the altered states of mind of course it is much more convenient to do this because you, the defense mechanisms the barrier the towers the guardians the i don't know shooters whomever the fuck you can imagine like demons or whatever they are there protecting and then once the defense systems are disarmed <laughs> using psychedelics you can then understand that yeah i mean there are some fucking bad patterns happening out there in your brain and you then and in that particular moment you realize it but the beauty of it is not only being able to realize it the beauty of it is that the ability to do something about it like i'm a yeah i guess i'm that strange type of person so when i was at the therapy sessions the questions i typically say out loud is that so I don't know what can I do about it <laughs> and I've been asked by the therapist probably not once but why there is a need to do something about it but I don't know I just kind of help myself but do something about it so if I find a problem like no nah, I need to fix it but 
Yeah, anyway, uh, going back to my mind, so I've found several problems throughout the years and fixed them, not all of them, of course, I'm still working myself, it's taking longer and harder to do, unfortunately, but yeah, I mean, if only I had the opportunity to, to consume psychedelics whenever I fucking want to, I'd be doing it probably, like, once in two or three weeks, just to take that here dose or something to you know re-experience the ego dissolvement and take a proper look at what the fuck is actually there because there are some patterns create are being created over the course of the, the, the time and then one may not notice them even though that you know things like mindfulness in generally meditation vipassana they can help build that level of comprehension and being in the moment and the perception of it so the beauty of those techniques again encountered in the previous episode is that you can be able to use them to be in a certain state of mind so you know concentrated here and now understanding like what the fuck is happening and you know being able to navigate real time uh thinking up front and yeah well probably this is more of a strategic thinking but still so going back to that analogy and the analogies are great they help uh, people understand each other and uh, not only through yeah i'm not gonna head that road but yeah anyway so going back to that uh state that gives you a great opportunity to understand like uh what the fuck is wrong with you so yeah there are there are things that you can fix, uh, ideally not by yourself, but using a assisted approach with a therapist. Certified or not, but yeah, one important thing is that you definitely need to feel safe with such person. And well, ideally that person should be able to help you. Because again, I mean, you can get a diploma, but then would it mean that 100% you are going to do no harm, <laughs> right? So, of course, there are uh, certain uh, certifications that kind of take into consideration those, like, kind of, what are they called? Moral, like, yeah, moral <laughs> aspects to it. And, yeah, again, just let, put, let us put that aside, and you, if need be, we can go back to it. Because again, this is the topic that I'm really intrigued and interested in, into understanding like how to use the knowledge of psychedelics, the coaching practice. And we got like two diplomas for coaching. So one is International Association of Coaching. The other one is by Oxford Leadership and Leading with Purpose. And Leading with Purpose is a topic that I can talk a lot. Actually, let me write down. Um, not gonna do it today of course because it is a big topic and i've unearthed my uh, purpose in 2021 and it still helps me navigate so yeah going back to the male ego thing and well actually not male ego ego concept in general and so once you're in an altered state of mind or with without any substances just with your therapist and you're doing some work that uh, helps you kind of understand the Again, mental brain patterns or connections and the, those that limit you from either achieving something or living a more full life, I guess. So, yeah, knowing this, you are then able to fix it all. But before fixing it all, you just need to arrive there in the first place, right? So in order to be able to understand like what there is to fix, in, actually. So going back to the uh, construct, um, yeah, I think I've lost my track here, but probably going to go back to the main topic and try to stitch it all together because there has been the certain direction where I was heading with this, but then I fucking lost it. <laughs> so yeah, definitely sometimes there are mistakes that happen in the navigation system. Uh, yeah, but yeah, just let, let me give an attempt here. So the the ego dissolvement, the ego concept in general, probably I was heading in the direction of trying to convey the meaning that I put behind ego or not really, because those were mainly defense systems. So ego is something that is more harder for understanding, I'd say, in terms of 
like concepts that I can uh, try and formulate here and now. But anyway, it is something that is on one hand a combination of everything that I mentioned before, but then again, there are some other core things there, and for such things to be described, it is not it would require me more knowledge and time to think. But yeah, I'm just again as usual improvising here, so I might be not the best fit in terms of remembering shit appropriately so yeah going back to the concept though is that uh sometimes ego is something that uh stops us from achieving something sometimes vice versa it helps us achieve a lot and then it could be a problem it could be a solution that depends solely case by case however in some cases it definitely can be a big problem for us as human beings like uh there is this nice uh, abbreviation or abbreviation, like short. So yeah, if you take ego and try to, <laughs> yeah, let me explain different manner. So ego is an extinguisher of great opportunities. Well, at least from the negotiation perspective, right? And there isn't that other episode in the negotiation, which you can uh, listen or watch, whatever you prefer, because I'm trying to use several platforms here, uh, YouTube and Spotify, to just see where it leads to. So, uh, yeah, again, why the fuck is it in the, the context of negotiation? Because there are cases where, you know, people try to agree to a certain deal, and there's this great podcast on negotiation, which is ne Negotiate Anything by uh, Kwame Christian and LinkedIn. So yeah, I'm probably going to put in the notes if I don't forget. So the reason here is that the reason I mentioned him in the first place is that he covers the topic of negotiation like very good. Like he brings really great experts, people who know what they're talking about when they talk about negotiation. And I know a lot about negotiation, but still I enjoy listening to that podcast because it brings new uh, perspective from time to time. It reminds of some of the concepts that I've been through. And there is this other concept. Yeah, let's dive in. <laughs> I'm just looking at time and whether or not I can dive in there, but probably I found the direction which I was looking for originally, so I'm going to do that. So where, where I was heading with this is that uh, the there is a selling and negotiation, and selling and negotiation are two entirely different processes, and they require a 100% different, well, roughly, set of skills. So when you sell, you do something different from what you would have been doing in negotiation. Uh, those are like entirely different approaches. And sell, you want to create, when selling process, you want to create the desire to obtain something from you by the other party. Whereas in negotiation, you are just agreeing to the terms of the deal. That's it. And of course, in negotiation, you don't need, uh, and actually probably, yeah, I can dig dive deeper here a bit. So in selling, you create the need to buy from you, and then you kind of try to bolster your position, kind of highlight the advantages of working with you or buying a product service whatever or then you're trying to convince them or you know use other approaches like price or for instance some references or some advertisement whatever well actually advertisement is something different but nevertheless part of it of the selling process so again uh marketing and sales probably is another topic fuck i'm gonna write it down because it is like a big one um so yeah, going back to the before I uh, went into marketing and sales relationship in terms of business, I'm gonna stop here and just go back to the negotiation because it's gonna take a while. So selling and negotiation require totally different approaches, right? And in selling, yeah, mentioned in negotiation, you are not interested to kind of make the other party want to buy from you because the sale has been done. If they're discussing the terms of the deal, it means that you are negotiating. And if they are unhappy with the content or con or amounts of anything, that means you're in fucking negotiation process, basically. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, if they're discussing, they need it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it, right? So yeah, going back to the negotiation process and the ego there is that when you are trying to agree to a deal, 
and depending on the situation it could be very competitive negotiation not gonna dig into that again another episode on negotiations available you can listen to it and then we can cover certain aspects of the topic if uh, you're interested just throw it in the comments uh, let me know i'll yeah i'll make fucking time and talk about negotiation because this is something you can talk a lot about so yeah going back to the um, aspect of agreeing to a deal so people are very competitive by nature males is male are men are as well, well mainly more competitive than women well depends of course there are cases with exemptions however in the majority of them right so male ego is important because it is about a competition here right so overcoming the other person beating them being the number one like uh, the head of the food chain and whatever probably this is one of the reasons there are many men in their politics but not only this on mainly it is due to the patriarchal nature of the society basically again other episodes covered that so not get a dick into that and then uh, unless put it in the comments and then going back to the aspect when you need to agree to a deal and then people don't agree to a deal and be due to many reasons you know maybe maybe it, it is outside what they can agree to maybe there are some other emotional reasons to it maybe there is some other business logic or whatever the fuck are the reasons but there are cases where ego is something that kills the negotiation and the deal and the partnership and there's a strange uh, tv show that's being popular recently succession i i have like a very strange i'm finishing the fourth season now i'm having like this roller coaster in some cases i think this is like a piece of shit as the tv show like i don't get it whereas there are episodes where I, I cannot stop laughing and it's just this really strange that it's like this absurd yeah i mean it's it's strangely interesting let's put it this way it has high rating so probably worth watching but yeah other than that i just don't re realize the f i wouldn't say it's that good however some of the um kind of chewing gum evenings <laughs> they make sense with the episodes of that tv show so yeah going back to that for particular ones there's male ego all over that fucking tv show there the entire fucking family is about male ego and i mean the deals that they try to make the deals that they try to fucking stop it is all ego driven and male ego driven and i think this is uh maybe one of the uh red lines uh, there although shiv is <laughs> being driven by ego as a, any other uh, person but she's just in patriarchal society hence uh, you know she's uh, less kind of capable in terms of building something again the society is fucking there and we as human beings are all part of uh, fucking patriarchal society in the majority of cases and this is a big problem so going back to the negotiation and the ego so people don't agree because of their fucking ego sometimes they cannot uh concede or you cannot just make a better proposal they cannot allow the other person to get something and it becomes a principle so once it is a principle it's fucked i mean the entire negotiation is fucked i mean it's better to replace people who are negotiating because otherwise it's fucked so yeah the ego is the main part there because why the fuck people would not agree because of their fucking ego actually in some cases so it is critical to understand this and being able to do something about it is another thing so i'm just gonna give you a bit of an example here so me and my wife we uh were great together sometimes we have problems and we've had a problem over the previous weekend and uh I'm not gonna dig into the situation in terms of details however it was a moment when uh, I got pissed because of something that I've experienced as an emotion um, as a result of certain actions so I was processing this information over the weekend uh, doing the gym exercises ellipse training cardio workout and I was thinking like why the fuck did I behave in that particular manner and then I just sat there and thought and thought it took me time it took me I don't know maybe like an hour and a half or so to just get there mentally however I 
uh, came to an understanding that I need to say something and it's going to be a fucking hard thing to do. And I was like, why the fuck it is so hard to do? So I don't know. I mean, may legal, I guess, there. And still I am the victim of the patriarchal society. I'm, I hope I'm not the reason of the patriarchal society. But at least my wife called me a victim. And I probably tend to agree with her in that regards because we've been watching that movie over the weekend on Sunday evening and it was uh, Life of Otto with Tom Hanks or yeah probably so I was weeping <laughs> like fucking crazy and I mean that's insane because there is this standard that men don't cry and there are other things that are being taught in the patriarchal society that men should or shouldn't behave in a certain manner and then I, you know, just cried and I was like, fuck, why am I feeling ashamed of crying? And yeah, that made me think that I definitely need to talk about male ego, even though I'm not that big of an expert here. Well, probably, although I may know 5% more than 95% of the population. So yeah, just having this in mind, just me just realizing that yeah of course i'm the fucking victim because i cannot do whatever the fuck i want to because of my my male ego and then going back to that situation where i realized that it was the um the, the one of the the reason of my behavior in a in an appropriate manner well things that i said basically to my wife I written it down, I came back home, I went to another room and I said there like fuck I need to go and tell her this, it's kind of paragraph of text that I've written to myself and then yeah you want to look her in the eyes and tell her this but then I'm like yeah I'm not gonna be able to say it properly so I'm just gonna read it from my screen and come to her and see the so I had to role play it in my head for a bit to just be mentally prepared to go there and say her the things that I wanted to convey and one of the things being that my realization is that maybe unconsciously I wanted to kind of like uh, I I don't know what's the proper word here, but it's just, you know, make a bite or something. Like, bit her probably would be the best um, word here. But yeah, in because I felt this experience of whatever, the feeling, right? I'm not going to go there. So again, me sitting there and they're standing in a role playing and then going to her and saying all this, like, fuck, why is it so hard to do? So one of the things why is because of ego. And this is something that stops us humans from doing something that we need to do in some cases. And it is important to recognize it. It is important not to be its victim, I'd say. So yeah, I'm still not there. I am a victim of my ego. I'm not perfect. I'm not enlightened, definitely, you know, for everything that I've done with myself, I'm not there, not saint by any means. Point here is that ego is something that people need to be aware of. And again, going back to the patriarchal society and the norms and the people who run the patriarchal society and the leaders of today and the leaders of tomorrow, they are the ones that need to understand that this is something that as well limits them in their in maybe your case so think about it were there any situations in your life in your job in what other areas of your life are <laughs> i think from a person who only works uh yeah so anyway yeah work a lot it's just a lot of things that i do but yeah it's, my wife keeps on telling me that I work a lot. I'm like, yeah, but it's not like working, like doing something, only one thing. I do like different variations of, and then my mind is switching. So I uh, hope that I'm not running myself into burnout. However, I'm checking my feelings. And by the way, I do recommend you to use an app called How We Feel. It is a 
uh, absolutely free app to use so it, it's like a journal like an emotional journal it helps you take notes of your emotions throughout the day and i have like three notifications throughout the day to remind me to do that and this is the thing that i've been doing for the duration of shit i don't know how many days let me see yeah so oh 98 day streak nice okay 78 unique feelings although there are like many so this is how it looks like and then yeah quadrants are intertwined with that uh, slides that have shown to you after visiting the IMD webinar recently and again in one of my previous episodes about it sustainability is called so yeah it's there it helps be mentally aware and mentally present in terms of this connection with what is happening with the body and with mind so there is like a strong connection right I mean our body in how our body feels is influencing how our mind is behaving or experiencing when Sears sees the world basically so for instance if you're on antidepressants well first thing I definitely advise gather data do your research about psychedelics because there are pub medical publications confirming and there is the third stage uh, trials happening phase or however the fuck they're called so yeah they do help people with uh, not only depression with uh, anxiety in general PTSD other vi variations of traumas and they heal they fucking heal way better than uh, pharmaceutically controlled drugs that they prescribe you so I'm not saying that you need to cancel all your, your medications. Don't do it. <laughs> Please advise with your medical professional. That's what I do. So yeah, I've been in the, using the main um, base therapy for my illness, which is called Bacterium's disease or an ankylosis spondylitis. So it's quite rare disease, 1% of the population or something like that. They can dig into details at some point in time because there are there has been a very emotional story uh, related to it. So yeah, drop that in comments if you want to dig into that personal journey of being the stubborn fucking person facing a uh, pretty much one and a half month par paralysis. Paralysis. Yeah, I couldn't walk. So anyway, going back to the male ego and us, I mean, talking from the perspective of how to survive nowadays being a white cisgender heterosexual uh, man i mean i can definitely say that we <laughs> however many uh, of us left out there need to be aware of our ego and not let it be the reason for us to achieve something in life in terms of i don't know love of the family members uh, great relationships with them in terms of other concepts and structures as well like fucking wars start because of somebody's egos i mean that's insane uh but yeah stupid decisions made uh, because of egos and yeah things like this so that all happens because of it and i'm gonna go back to that hook that i've uh, mentioned to you at the very beginning so uh how to deal with a fucking ego situation simple imagine yourself from in 50 years from now and look back at this particular situation from that perspective what would you do so i look back to myself there in that moment over the weekend and uh said yeah I, definitely need to do it so i went to my wife and i read that uh phrase that i've written uh, in my iphone and then yeah we got better um and eventually you know continued loving each other and yeah that's how it works so thank you for watching and um yeah insanely important topic leave comments share subscribe throw some crypto in there uh, i like money i want to go to the uh, coaching in psychedelics coaching so yeah thank you for listening and um, speak to you next time